This is Rick Malone for the San Francisco Symphony. Sergei Prokofiev was one of a number of composers who had enough faith in the new Soviet Union to remain loyal after the Communist Revolution of 1917. But he was enough of a realist about the nature of revolutions to wait out the actual conflict somewhere else. He spent several years in the United States before settling in Paris until he returned to the USSR in 1936. His years in this country were not as lucrative as he had hoped, though. I had expected my musical career to be as smooth sailing in America as it had been in recent years years in Russia, he wrote, but I was mistaken. I found myself in a musical world where everything was excellently organized, but utterly different from what I had been accustomed to. I was so sure that I would be returning home shortly that I didn't want to bind myself to a contract for any length of time." End quote. There was one successful episode in his American stay. While he was still in Russia in 1917, he had met Cyrus McCormick, the farm equipment baron. McCormick was an enthusiast for modern music, and he had arranged several performances of Prokofiev's music by the Chicago Symphony. He had insisted that the composer send him a telegram if he ever found himself in the United States, and that is exactly what Prokofiev did. McCormick introduced him to the director of the Chicago Opera, who wanted to stage Prokofiev's first opera, The Gambler, but they couldn't get the score out of Russia. So instead, Prokofiev was commissioned to write a new opera based on a Russian adaptation of the old Commedia dell'arte tale, The Love for Three Oranges. Prokofiev finished his new opera in June 1919, but the production was delayed by the death of the director and a dispute over the composer's contract. The premiere finally took place in December 1921 to a full and enthusiastic house, although the Chicago papers seemed slightly embarrassed at having enjoyed a modernist premiere so much. The Love for Three Oranges has an absurdist plot that weaves together a number of complicated storylines, including one involving a depressed prince who finally cheers up over the misfortune of the sorceress Fata Morgana. To get revenge at him, Fata Morgana causes him to fall head over heels in love with three actual oranges, which are in the kitchen of the witch Creonta, where they are guarded by a gigantic cook armed with a ladle. The prince does rescue the oranges and they begin to grow, and it turns out that they each contain a fairy prince. The first two princesses die of thirst in a desert, but the third is preserved by a bucket of water produced by a group of eccentrics, and after many threats and misadventures, the prince and the princess are united and live happily ever after. A few years after the premiere of the opera, Prokofiev created a six-movement symphonic suite, which opens with The Eccentrics, based on the opera's prologue. The eccentrics argue with other stock characters, tragedians, comedians, lyricists, and empty heads about what sort of theatrical evening this should be.
Section 2, Chelio the Magician and Fata Morgana Play Cards, is subtitled Sen Infernal, Seen in Hell. The sorcerer Chelio and the witch Fata Morgana play a high-stakes game of cards, with the fate of the King of Clubs and the King of Spades in the balance. Alas, Chelio loses all three hands to Fata Morgana, who will play an important role in the rest of the story. The march that follows is one of the most familiar of all Prokofiev's music, thanks to its use in films and television and the old radio serial, The FBI in Peace and War. Next comes a scherzo, which in the opera is an entr'acte between the first two scenes of Act 3. The prince, accompanied by his court jester, has been lifted by an enormous wind and blown off to Creonta's palace, where they plan to abduct the three oranges that have captured the prince's heart. The Prince and the Princess is from the scene in the desert, where the princesses are extracted from the oranges. Two die from thirst, but one survives and sings a love duet with the prince. The symphonic suite concludes with The Flight, the finale of the opera. Various bad guys try to escape from the throne room in the palace, only to fall through a trap door that Fata Morgana has opened. Over the years, the suite from The Love for Three Oranges has become more popular than the opera itself. When Prokofiev returned to the USSR in 1927, after 10 years away, there was a huge celebration. He wrote in his autobiography that, After meeting old friends at his hotel, I went to a rehearsal of the orchestra. As we approached the hall, I heard the march from The Three Oranges being played. They are taking it a little too slow, I said, thinking they were rehearsing it. But it turned out that the orchestra was playing the march in my honor. End quote. This is Rick Malone for the San Francisco Symphony.